It's episode 528 of the Locked on Texas Rangers podcast. On today's podcast, I'm talking about the 20 international prospects that the Rangers signed. A little bit of non-headway made in the negotiation talks to end this lockout. All that and more coming up on this episode of Locked on Rangers. Let's get into it. You are Locked on Rangers. Your daily Texas Rangers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On to the Texas Rangers. I'm your host, Bryce Paddock, here today, breaking down these international signings that the Rangers have done. Uh, not going to be talking with Grant this week, scheduling conflict prevented that, but he'll be back next week. But first, I want to thank you guys so much for making Locked On Rangers your first listen of the day every single day. If you're not already, go ahead and follow me on Twitter at Bryce Paddock. Follow the show at Locked On Rangers and subscribe on YouTube or wherever the heck you get your podcasts. Now, it's it's basically all prospect month in the month of January because there's no news, there's no headway. Uh, but let's let's just talk about the the lack of news that's happening. <sighs> it's it's growing very frustrating, and it's looking like some, if not a decent chunk, of spring training will be lost because these two sides are no closer to getting si- getting things done than they were when the owners instituted this lockout in early December, right after all this fun stuff happened for the Rangers. Nope, you don't get to enjoy it. Here's a lockout. That is Major League Baseball to a freaking T shooting itself in the foot. But what are some of these big stumbling blocks that they are going over? Well, the biggest issue is that the owners are holding holding the line and they're saying, we're going to wait you out and you guys are going to cave first. We are more committed to this than you. One of the big things that the players want is big changes. They want the young players to be paid more. They want to cut years off of the arbitration process. They want free agency to open up a little bit sooner. And, you know, they want teams to be competitive, which, you know, makes sense. I think it was the, uh, yeah, it was the players that, that instituted, they proposed a draft lottery style like the NBA draft where the team with the worst record doesn't automatically get the best pick. And, you know, I, I think that's a decent proposal. But as a fan of a team who sucked really badly the last two years, I would have been really upset if my team sucked and I ended up with the number six overall pick. And it's not like the NBA. The reason other leagues don't do that is because, well, I mean, football's kind of this way in that it's pretty hard to screw up a number one overall pick, and they're usually pretty good from the start. But hockey and baseball especially, you can screw up a number one overall pick. Look at the list of guys who were number one overall picks sometime. Just go look down at a huge, huge long list and how many of those guys are Hall of Famers. There's not a whole lot of them. Like, I don't think it's even half. There's a whole lot of them that don't end up working out nearly as well. I mean, you have your occasional uh, Ken Griffey Juniors and your A-Rods and your Bryce Harpers and your, uh, you know, Steven Strasburgs. But you also have guys that completely flame out whose names you don't even know. Or guys who just ended up being a pretty good player for quite a long time. It's not the be-all, end-all franchise defining. Like, if you get the number one overall pick and you can draft a, well, a number three overall pick and you can draft a Michael Jordan or the number one overall pick and you can get, like, a LeBron James that will define your franchise for decades. Like, it's not like that in baseball. Not very often. And even if you do draft that guy, a lot of things have to go well for him to make the major leagues and live up to his elite potential, which they do in any league. But baseball especially, there's such a long way off, especially if you draft a kid from high school or even kids out of college. They still take a couple of years. Even the most sure-handed, surefire bets still take a few years in the minor leagues. So I don't know that that's necessarily the biggest problem that the players should be focusing on. I think providing for the young ones and making sure that they are paid well and protecting minor leaguers where they haven't before and they're not willing to make concessions this time. And I love that. And I think that's great. But I think one of the biggest problems in baseball that they need to address is not the teams that bottom out because those teams, they're trying something. They are going for it. Like the Astros lost for all those years on purpose, made completely terrible teams on purpose for what four or five years and got a whole bunch of number one overall picks and turned that into a lot of success and ended up even drafting well when and developing players well after they had already started winning 
And the Rangers are, you know, trying to do the same thing, bottom out, and so you can rebuild and regroup. But the thing that's most frustrating, I think most damaging to baseball, is the teams that are content with being mediocre. Teams like Cleveland, teams like Oakland, teams like Tampa Bay, the ones that are not willing to spend money. I mean, Tampa Bay, they are good. They have been perennially good. They've not had a bad season in, like, a decade, more than a decade, it feels like. And they don't rebuild. They literally just reload. They're the only team in sports who can really say that, that just keeps going with these, you know, faceless players until they get big and then they trade them off to somewhere else before they have to get paid. Um, but I think the teams that are content with being mediocre, like the Reds this year as well, a team that was pushing the playoffs and is already talking about, yeah, no, we got to we gotta scrap this team for parts. We're not really good enough to compete, even though they were good enough to compete and did compete and had a pretty decent team. So I don't know what's wrong with the state of Ohio. I know things are not very expensive there, so the owners should be able to pay up and you know get decent pl- players or even pay their own players it just doesn't make sense and that's more frustrating to me and i think more harmful to baseball in general and in the long run than teams who are trying to bottom out get good players and then get good again those are teams at least trying stuff whereas teams like cleveland and the ones that are just content to oh, okay we got this star player look how good he is for a couple of years ah he wants to get paid let's sell him and uh you know be mediocre again and then end up developing this other player and you know trade him be mediocre and never actually really go for it that's the more frustrating thing to me. I think that's more damaging to baseball is teams like that. More like the Reds. I mean, the, the Rays at least win quite a bit, and it's still frustrating, but I at least get it. I still think if they'd spent, if they would even be, I don't know, in like the middle third of like spending, either of those teams, Oakland or Tampa Bay, gosh, they would have won a World Series by now. Either of those teams would have won a World Series. I mean, I think the A's might have won one in the last, you know, 300 years of being a baseball team, but not in the. 27 years of my lifetime have they won a World Series and you know they have a reputation as a lovable loser and I I do love them and I do hope they stay in Oakland but still those teams being forced to compete being forced to spend a little bit of money and the reason the players oppose the salary floor because there are a lot of other little riders that the owners put on it like oh they're not really going to mess with the um, the luxury tax tax which is something the players want so that players and free agency can get a lot more money and it won't discourage owners from spending money. They don't have a, a, you know, a technical salary cap, but they do have a luxury tax, which is basically the exact same thing. I was like, oh, well, we don't want to pay the luxury tax. Like the freaking Yankees, the Yankees are worried about the luxury tax. The Boston Red Sox are worried about the luxury tax. Dodgers are the only team that don't really care about the luxury tax, and I respect them so much for it. And it looks like the Mets aren't caring either, which great for them. Great for teams who don't care. We're going to go spend money and go be a good baseball team. That's good. That's what you want. And I think that is something that the new CBA, I don't know how to address it. I have no idea the first thing about how to get on fixing something like that. But that needs to be a priority, and someone needs to figure out how to fix teams not actually caring about winning. But we'll take a quick break when we come back. We'll look a little bit at these uh, international signings and what people had to say about them and how good they are. But first, I want to tell you guys about Built Bar. You know, it's a new year. There's some new prospects to talk about, and it's it's time for New Year's resolutions. So if you're about getting fit or eating healthier, make sure you include Built Bar in your plan. Built Bar, it makes it so easy to stick to your resolution. It tastes so good. It just, it really does taste so good. Like, I can't hammer home how good they taste until you go taste them. Like, I can describe them. I can use adjectives like tasty, delicious, soft, chocolatey, delicious again, because it's double delicious. Like you just will want to eat them. You got to try them out. They're so good. You know, here's an idea for the new year. You can take out all your, you know, all your treats that aren't very good for you, like your candy and your, your snacky foods, your junk foods. And you can, you can put in some built bars, which are just as good, just as good tasting. They're also good for you. So, like, you don't even really have to go work out. It's basically just like Built Bar did the workout for you. You, you just go get some Built Bars. They're so good. Trust me, go to Built.com, use promo code LOCK15, get 15% off your order. Promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at Built.com. Now, let's take a look at these international signings. The Rangers have, you know, they always get inter- international signings. They're always pretty big in the market. They usually get some big top guy, and this year... They did not get anybody in the top five of MLB.com's top international um, prospects, but they did get number six, 
That's Anthony Gutierrez. He is an outfielder. The other big guy on their top 50 that the Rangers signed is another outfielder, Jose De Jesus at number 27. Now, Anthony Gutierrez, the big guy, number six, um, he signed for 1.9975 or, you know, let's see, $2,500 under $2 million. So $1,997.50. 500, whatever. And then uh, Jose de Jesus signed for 1.1, nearly $1.2 million. So that is the vast majority of their uh, bonus pool. They had $5.1 million in signing bonus money. So about $3 million of that, a little bit over that, went to these two big top guys. Now, let's talk about Anthony Gutierrez first. He grew up in Venezuela, but then he moved to the Dominican so that he could train and uh, get some some world-class uh, training from these guys. He plays center field now. Um, it looks like he's projected to move to a corner outfield as he gets bigger. We'll see if that happens. He's got a good, you know, a good natural swing path that's pretty repeatable. Um, he's got a good knack for getting the barrel on baseballs, and he's uh, pretty fast. He's considered one of the better hitters in this class. He is the second-ranked outfielder in the class, uh, number two, a left-hander, from Cuba. I forget where exactly he went, but that is the only guy higher than him on the list. Everybody else is shortstop because, you know, it's international prospects. So all you got is, you know, pitchers, outfielders, and shortstop. That's pretty much all there is there. Um, but he's got some good swing mechanics. Um, he is a uh, switch hitter, which is great, very encouraging. Um, and, you know, he's got a good feel for the strike zone and, you know, can recognize pitches pretty well at an early age. He is 17 years old, so that is definitely encouraging. Let's see, what is his actual birthday? This is going to make you feel old, so just prepare yourselves. Um, he's listed at 6'3", 180 pounds. Actually, no, he's a right-handed hitter. Sorry, I don't know why uh, the way they were describing it made it sound like he was a switch hitter. He is not. He's 17 years old. Born <sighs> November 25th, 2004. 2004, he's one of the older ones in this class. He's 17, born in 2004. God, that feels so old. But um, yeah, he's got a plus potential future hit tool, about an average power. Every tool is as at least a 50 on this scale with a run at a 55, according to MLB Pipeline. So they really like this kid and seems like a pretty good signing for the Rangers. Good on them getting a guy who is in the top 10. Now, the other guy they signed is um, De Jesus, who plays, I think it's more likely to stay in center field than it looks like Gutierrez is going to be. But still, with all these guys, you got to take it with a grain of salt. Right now, they're playing center field, but, you know, who knows? This guy is 17. This is a switch hitter. He throws left-handed, listed at 6'1", a buck 70. Um, all of his tools, again, 50 or above. His hit is a 55 as opposed to the 60 of Gutierrez, and uh, his run is a 55 as well. So, yeah, um, they really, really like him, and he's got... Uh, actually, I confused... My gosh, there is so little on these guys that it, it, it's so confusing. But excuse me while I said Gutierrez, who is from Venezuela, moved the Dominican to train. That is not true. He trained in Venezuela and was signed out of there. Jose de Jesus grew up in Venezuela and then went to the Dominican to go and train there. Um, but yeah, he trained with uh, Francis Roman in the Dominican. He proved to be above average runner, you know, could get quite a few steals. Um, but he's got some some pretty decent power, especially as a right-handed hitter, which is, which is nice. You love seeing that. And a good approach for a youngster. Again, he's getting some comparisons to Carlos Beltran, which is very encouraging, um, obviously bit of a stretch to say, yeah, this guy who might be Hall of Fame caliber is is um, is the same as this 16-year-old, but like, you know, that's just kind of what they do with these 16-year-olds. You never really know all that much about him, but yeah, very encouraging. No, no, no. Okay. It's the exact same thing. I was not wrong. Both of them trained in the Dominican, grew up in Venezuela. All right. Yeah. So he trained at the same place where uh, at Nina, uh, Amaris Nina, his academy in Santo Domingo. He has also had teenage prospects, including Eloy Jimenez, Rafael Devers, um, and they're saying that Gutierrez 
has a similar talent level at that age, which is very encouraging. Both those guys are very good players. If he turns out to be anywhere near that good a player, Rangers have an absolute uh, steal of a signing. So those guys are very encouraging. Both of them play center field for now. We'll see how far that goes. Um, but yeah, very encouraged by these guys. Now, I'm just going to name off the other guys, their positions, and how much they signed for, because that's literally all I know about these other guys. Um, but first, I want to tell you guys about Bet Online, because the Rangers are making some pretty good bets, pretty sizable bets on these guys. And if you want to bet like the Rangers, but bet on sports that are actually going on right now, like, I don't know, football playoffs, like basketball, like hockey, like college basketball, all kinds of good stuff. You know, they've got boxing, UFC, your favorite Vegas casino games as well. Bet Online remains your number one bet, uh, the best sports wagering action for 2022. There's a new year, a new updated desktop and mobile site to sign up today. Receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code locked on to get started. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports. Bet Online, it's where the game starts. Now let's take a look at the rest of these guys. The Rangers have 18 more players that they signed. Um, it's quite a few, quite a few of these guys that they signed. Uh, by the way, if they sign for $10,000, it doesn't count towards their bonus pool. That is basically the minimum that they can sign these guys for. So we're going to take a look at these guys. There are uh, quite a few of them, I believe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine of them, nine of the 20 were signed for $10,000, so that doesn't count towards the Rangers' bonus pool. Now, starting with the number three guy listed on this list, we have uh, Daniel Bruzal, a catcher from Venezuela, signed for $397,500. My gosh, I am so great at reading numbers. This is going to go super well. Next, we have another catcher. Jesus Lopez. I forgot the the fourth kind of player. There are outfielders, there are shortstops, there are pitchers, and then there are catchers. That's it. There's no one plays third base, no one plays second, no one plays first. Everyone is either a shortstop waiting to be moved to a different position, a pitcher, a center fielder who will probably move to a corner outfielder or maybe a first base or whatever, or a catcher. Like that's that's it. That's all you got. So. Now we have Jesus Lopez out of Venezuela, signed for $347,500. We have Marcos Torres, an outfielder from Venezuela, $247,500. Next we have Christian Gonzalez, shortstop out of Venezuela, $222K500. These are all, they all have a $500 at the end, except for these $10,000 guys. This is just rude to me who can't, you know, say things. Okay, Christian Gonzalez, like I said, shortstop out of Venezuela. 222k, 0.5k. Eric Al Alvarez, excuse me, we have a utility guy in here. This is new. This is different. I don't know if it's good or bad, but it's different. Eric Alvarez, congratulations on being unique out of Venezuela for 222.5k. Luis Marquez, another Venezuelan. They're all from Venezuela or the Dominican Republic too. Like It feels like all of them are from there. There's very few players drafted or signed out of like Colombia or literally anywhere but those two countries. You also have a few Cuban players, um, very few Mexican players, which feels kind of weird because, you know, the, the players that are there, there are quite a few Mexican stars in baseball. We just need to have more of them, more diversity. I guess this is just, this is the sport where baseball takes over as opposed to soccer. A lot of soccer stars from these other countries. Everyone in Argentina, I guess, and, and, you know, Brazil is playing soccer instead of baseball. But, you know, only takes a few of them. I got a couple guys from Curacao that, that broke out. So that's just kind of what it is. Anyway, I completely lost where I was. No, we are on uh, Hiker Garcia, an infielder from Venezuela, 147.5K. Esteban Mejia, infielder from the Dominican Republic, 72.5K. Hector Ortiz, center fielder, Venezuela, 47.5K. Echerdy? Echerdy? E-C-H-E-D-R-Y. Vargas. Mr. Vargas, an infielder from the Dominican Republic, 410K. Ronnie Cabrera, outfielder, Dominican Republic, 10K. Alfredo es Espinoza, catcher from Venezuela. These are all 10K. I'm just going to say the rest of them are all 10K because that's what they are. Um, Climier Lemos, infielder from the Dominican, 
Yuri Cabrera, center fielder from the Dominican. Jose Torres, right-handed starter from Panama. Congrats to you, the only Panamanian in this class. Well done. Freddy Espinal, outfielder from the Dominican. Oliver Jan, outfielder from the Dominican Republic. And Adonis Villa Vincencio. That's fun to say. Villa Vincencio, a right-handed reliever from Venezuela. So those are the guys to be aware of, to be apprised of. None of them will be in my top 30 Rangers. Pro- I can already give this away. I mean, I started the series before the January 15th date. Also, this goes all the way until December 15th. So the Rangers have quite a while to sign some other guys. Usually it doesn't happen with the big guys. Obviously they got their two big deals done with um, Gutierrez and De Jesus. So those guys are the big cream of the crop. Also keep an eye on those two catchers from Venezuela and Daniel Bruzal, Bruzual and Jesus Lopez as well. Two guys to, you know, keep a few eyeballs on, but mainly those two center fielders for now. We'll see where they go in the future, guys, out of Venezuela. So that's exciting. But no, none of them are going to be in my top 30 prospects, not because I don't believe in them, but because they are all teenagers. They have not had any professional experience, and I have no idea what the heck to do with them. All I have is some reports from MLB.com, and maybe if I can get my hands on them, Baseball America. But that's not enough to put them in my top 30, guys. So, yeah. As of right now... uh, the Rangers are not allowed to train any, trade any of their um, bonus pool money. So we'll see. Also, by the way, in case you're wondering how does this affect Seiya Suzuki signing potentially, it doesn't. Players who are um, foreign professional players who are at least 25 years old and have played in a foreign league for at least six seasons are also exempt from bonus pool limits. So that's Seiya Suzuki. That was also like you. Darvish was because they both played more than six seasons or more in the um, Japanese Nippon Professional Baseball League. So not something you have to worry about the Rangers spending all this money. Why would you do this and spend it on these these teenagers? No, no, no. There's still money for Seiya Suzuki. He, he can still eventually come over if baseball figures out what the heck it's doing and actually has a season. I'm wondering, I'm, I'm really curious, because this, this feels like it's not his fault, but it's just kind of poor timing. But I'm wondering if he does one more season in Japan, if it's looking like there's not going to be an agreement made before the season. And I think that would be a real freaking bummer. But maybe you could see that the Rangers are more for real and improving. I don't know how much that's going to make a difference to him. Honestly, I don't really know what exactly he's factoring in. But maybe that could give the Rangers another year to go and maybe sign some more big free agents next year, which I think they will probably do. I don't think they were done. I don't think it was a one-time thing because if they want to actually contend in 2023, like they said, they're, they're going to require a bit more muscle on that team. And hopefully, say Suzuki is part of it. Hopefully they can figure out a deal like tomorrow or as I'm recording this and make me look really stupid for discussing all these things. I would love to look stupid in this case. I would welcome it with open arms. But for right now, because it's looking like there's not going to be a deal done for quite some time, I can't try and plan my way to my first ever Ranger spring training or just any spring training at all, because why would I book a hotel and spend money and request time off for something that might not happen? And just looking at this point, like it probably won't happen. I won't know a day to do it. But please, God, owners, Major League Baseball owners, please just concede Just pay the players what they want. Like, maybe you don't concede on everything, but, like, give them the big things. Go pay your youngsters a little bit more. You know you can. You know you can afford it. You know they're worth it. But just, like, I don't want to do another season without baseball or another half season without baseball. I've done that podcast. It's not a fun podcast. It's not as entertaining. I mean, maybe it's entertaining to watch me slip into insanity. I'm sure it was. But it wasn't a great podcast. The Rangers have... Some good players now. This season's going to be fun. It's going to be enjoyable. It's not going to be bottom feeder central. It, it, they might still have a losing record. They might lose 90 games, but they're not going to lose 100. I feel really confident of that, unless something awful happens, in which case I couldn't predict it, and it's not my fault, and I'm sorry, because maybe it is. But no, please, please ownership. Just cave just a little bit. 
you're still raking in buku bucks and you're going to hurt yourselves long term. It's like many of these proposals, many of these things that owners are not willing to give up long term, like not paying minor league players, like we talked about with Grant either last week or a couple weeks ago. Like it's just in your best interest. It's going to prove better for you in the long run. And you'd think these guys who are such smart business people who have these billions of dollars would have gotten that way by seeing the bigger picture, by assessing the situation, assessing what made the most sense to do and then doing it and benefiting from it. I don't know how all of these guys got to get all their money by being so irrational and no, my side is going to do this and that's all I'm going to do. Maybe that works in business. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm feeling like more times than not making decisions based on emotion as opposed to actually thinking reasonably and logically at a problem and assessing it and determining what's the best solution as opposed to just, I want it this way. I don't think that really works that well. And we saw what happened the last time there was a work stoppage that actually went into the season. It was a strike, not a lockout. This one was self-imposed, which also means the owners have been losing money by not being able to profit off the name image likeness of their players by, you know, putting them on their website, which is stupid. So that all the MLB.com articles are about like, hey, here's these retired players or here's these guys that are not on the 40-man roster. It's just stupid. The Rangers are losing money specifically, not being able to hype up the crap ton of money they just spent on these really good players just days after it happened it's just so stupid and so frustrating and i get so insane just thinking about it but please the owners are more in the wrong here because they have been you know chipping away and chipping away and chipping away and have always held the line and players have just kind of you know They've been asking for these same things for the last few bargaining agreements, but the players have just kind of given up and have not been as willing to fight for it. And this time they are, which great for them. I'm excited, but I would also like baseball. But I understand if they don't have a season or if they have a shortened season or if we have a basically non-existent super rapid spring training. Like that makes sense. But I'm hoping that both sides can agree to something that's in their best interest, actually help the players, owners just like take a step, everyone just take a step back, make an informed decision that is for the best side, the best deal for the players and for the owners and for the fans. And don't cut into the season. You've got so much momentum, such a fun off season, like actually get to use that momentum to go into a regular season that is going to be a lot of fun. There's going to be a lot of teams competing, a lot of teams in big markets like that are actually trying things, which is very exciting, that haven't been super great the last few years. I'm looking at the Mets and the Rangers specifically on that one. But other teams are trying things too, and that's exciting. But I would just like to see baseball happen. I have done a podcast when there is no season. It is rough, but I'll still be here for you. But I'm sure less of you will be, be here and that makes perfect sense. So don't alienate the fans. You already have baseball. You have a hard enough time getting them in the door anyway. And if you do this, you're going to lose a whole lot of them. And you're going to be like an 18th tier sport. Don't do that. Don't do that, baseball. you still got this. Just take a step back. Take a breath. And please, God, let there be a regular season uninterrupted. That's going to do it for this edition of Locked on Rangers. I'll be back tomorrow, I believe, ranking the 10 best free agents the Rangers had. I might I might have a crossover with somebody. I don't know. We'll see where that goes. But in any case, I'll be back with another episode on Friday. And until next time, don't forget to enjoy baseball.